Hello everybody and welcome to the third round of the first Limitless Qualifier. I'm Jack and I'm going to be post commentating the, uh, like I say, the third round. So far we've played against a Baby Blounds, which I think is a pretty unfavourable matchup usually for the deck. Uh, again, a couple of techs that we're playing um, can help out that matchup though. And we've played against a Cincino Mill, so two um, pretty popular decks, pretty popular matchups. Uh, two matchups that I feel aren't super favourable for me. Um, at best, they're like 50-50s, uh, I think, without the techs. Though I think the techs do push them into my favour a little bit. And we're up against uh, what I believe to be another Cincino Mill, from what I remember. I'm pretty sure it was another Cincino Mill. I see some pretty interesting types, though. There's Fire, Psychic, um, Lightning, and Fighting. So I'm pretty... Uh, interested to see what we're up against here. It's definitely, you're not used to seeing lightning and fighting types in the milling variants. The fighting types are usually Aerodactyl, the lightning types uh, are Dedenne maybe. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, I'm probably missing something. Uh, but as you see, he turns over Encino and uh, Azation, so again, I'm pre feeling uh, that this is probably Cincino Mill. We don't have quite as good of a start as we did last time. Uh, I've started with both of my escape balls, which isn't ideal, and we're going first, so we're probably going to have to uh, use this quick ball on a um, Antidene rather than a Jirachi. I could go for a Jirachi and try and find another quick ball uh, using the switch and the escape boards, but I'd rather just go for the guaranteed Denene. We're probably not going to be able to get much value out of Jirachis this game because of that, but even so, I think it's the correct play, and we do hit some energy, which is really, really nice. Uh, as you probably remember from last round, I got Fabbard turn one. Um, so I'm super scared of that now, so I attach the Metal Energy. Um, and I do go for the Primate Wisdom to put on another energy on top of the deck. To be able to guarantee an Intrepid Sword. Uh, looking at this now, another benefit of post-commentary is I can notice my misplays. I definitely should have gone for the Tag Call there to search for uh, Sinlin and Gazhalla just to get them out of my deck. I didn't necessarily want to. I remember why I didn't, but I think on reflection I should have. Um, I didn't want to because I didn't. I wanted to have another two cards in the deck for him to have to mill, and I have a pretty strong hand already in being able to, um, you know, carry on, carry on through this game. So that's why I didn't. I do now, looking at it, think it was a misplay, though. I am not too... Uh, proud to admit that I definitely made a lot of mysteries throughout this tournament and as you see as the day goes on especially as I then go and do it now um, as the day goes on you can definitely see uh, I start to lose my mind do it, playing a lot of Pokemon uh, really makes the later rounds go well it makes it shows in the later rounds I think but yeah I do as I've mentioned in a couple of uh, at least once in this series so far, I did have some pretty bad lag issues, which you just saw again there, which wasn't ideal. Um, but yeah, I then do go for the GX attack. Even though we won a game, uh, we won the game last round without going for the GX attack. You still definitely want to go for it. Uh, right now, we don't have another energy, but we do have access to this good Haller or a um, Professor's Research, which is nice to be able to search for an energy and attack an attack with this ADP. Um, he's only got one Mincino out, or Cincino out, which is pretty strong for us. Uh, another little trick for you, you can click on Stacked View. Uh, if you uncheck Stacked View, you can see the exact cards you mill with Belabor, uh, which is a really nice feature of being able to seeing exactly what was discarded that turn, if you're maybe not sure if you already had certain cards in the discard. So I do go down the uh, Guzhala route, Knowing that basically, if I, I I could search for an energy with uh, the research, but I'm just going to be feeding into his win con pretty nicely. I don't feel like I really need to do much here. Um, I can just start churning through prizes. There's no dolls in sight. Um, I am going to search for these energy just to be able to guarantee that we have attackers in case. Uh, sort of any kind of yell grunt plus hammer plays happen. We want lots of energy on the board just to guarantee that we have attackers. Uh, I also should have metal sourced here. Uh, this turn, playing around kind of hand disruption. That's one thing I definitely should have done. I think I'm checking for a metal energy just then. Uh, I remember doing that in the tournament as well. 
But yeah, again, I'm feeling pretty confident. Um, I have all four customs plus my three gusting catches left, and there's no dolls in sight still, so right now we're probably going to be taking another two prizes with an ADP, uh, which is really, really nice. I'm feeling pretty confident about this. Goes for the uh, Belabor and Bryson Man and does discard. At least did a Dene. I didn't quite see what else uh, the dis he discarded. I have sped the footage up a little bit, by the way. I don't know. I'm sure you could tell. But we do hit some of our Gust. Uh, we don't need to use the Gust here, but I decided to use the Gust just to basically try and get rid of his draw engine. We could have potentially gone for the Zation there, but we're going to have to take two knockouts either way. So um, the Zation ends his turn, whereas he's put down our Aranguru, sort of indicating that he maybe wants to Aranguru in future. So I decided to take out the Cincino. Which again, maybe I should have saved the Gust, but I also, I don't think I necessarily, it was necessarily a misplay to go for that. He does hit the Crushing, or he does go for the Crushing, uh, but it's another Tails, unfortunately. He's looking for some kind of way to disrupt me right, me right now. Um, I do see, like I said, I do see a couple of pretty interesting cards. He plays the Hooper, plays Giraffe Rig, which is not often seen. Um, I was pretty scared about this Giraffe. Getting the Metal Energy, that's another reason why I definitely should have used the Saucer. Just because he could have used the Giraffe to Lost Zone, that Metal Energy. And if that in combination with some way of getting rid of some energy on my ADP, I actually could have been in a pretty tough spot. So that definitely was a misplay there. That's another thing, I, like I say, I really like about post-commentary. I can notice things um, in post-commentary that maybe I don't always notice in uh, live commentary. And again, he just passes. Unfortunately, he's not able to find any dolls or any way of switching into dolls. So it was a pretty simple round. Uh, nothing too convoluted. Um, e even so, I don't feel the matchup is super favourable. But definitely with the extra gusting, it's very, very um, useful to be able to have more access to the bench. More access to playing around these dolls, which is basically one of the biggest issues for this deck. But yeah, you can see you can see another freeze here, so I'll uh, pretty much chop off the end of this here, but that's another victory. We're pretty much, uh, well, we're on 3-0 at this point, which is a really, really nice um, start to this tournament. I'm super happy with that. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Keep an eye out for future rounds, and uh, yeah, it was a really fun tournament. So make sure you join in for the future tournaments that Limitless hold.